Right now, one man is in jail while police investigate a homicide on Christmas Eve. We'll share what neighbors are saying. And two brothers work to turn a Christmas Day tragedy around as they donate the gifts they got to kids who were left homeless after an early morning fire. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. Good morning, everyone. We hope you all had a great Christmas. It is Thursday, December 26th. I'm Josh Breider with meteorologist Chris Reese. Leah and Hattie have the morning off. Certainly not feeling like Christmas time out there this morning. We were going to be close to 50 degrees today. Yeah, I think we're going to go beyond 50 degrees today, which if we do, it'll break a record. The wow. record high for today is 50. Now, anyone who's headed out the door this morning, Josh, around this time of the year, warm air just leads to fog. And so that is exactly what we are dealing with. A couple counties might be trimmed from this as we go through the next couple of minutes as that fog is primarily an issue towards the north. I think uh, Columbia and Sauk counties will be able to be removed from that dense fog advisory. But here's the deal. As you work your way to the north, you get a quarter mile visibility in places such as Watoma and Camp Douglas, zero in Black River Falls. So that's why we're keeping these dense fog advisories around. Whew. It's 48 degrees, Josh. Oh. <laughs> wow, we are waking up on December 26th with temperatures already in 50 in Janesville. Milwaukee at 52, Kenosha at 53. This is going to be the continued trend as we go through the day. This is a strong southerly wind that we do have in place. We're coming out of the southwest at 8 miles per hour, though, officially as you work your way towards the airport. Clouds will be on the increase as we go through the day as well, so do be prepared for that. By this afternoon, we'll see those temperatures right around 52 degrees. But folks, we are, of course, watching that travel forecast across the upper Midwest. I don't think we'll have any issues today. No issues as we head into tomorrow. But by the time we get you towards Saturday, we could be looking at heavy rain and some slick roads. And then beyond that, things turn colder with chances for some wintry weather as well. I drove through that dense fog last night. It was no joke. Oh, seriously. I we didn't have it here, Yeah, but I've seen it before. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> Definitely take it slow out there. All right, Chris, thank you. My pleasure. We start this half hour with an update to breaking news we've been following all morning as people head home from the holidays. All northbound lanes on Highway 151 at Reiner Road and Sun Prairie are back open after a multi-car crash overnight. Three vehicles were involved in the crash just before 2 a.m. Debris from the crash forced all northbound lanes to be closed for a few hours this morning and traffic had to be rerouted. Multiple ambulances were sent to that scene, but there's no official word on injuries this morning. Well, today is expected to be the second busiest travel day of the year with millions of people returning home from the holidays. Here's a live look at Dane County Regional Airport this morning, a very busy airport as you can see here. Now there are no delays heading in and out of the airport. Chris says the weather shouldn't affect air travel too much today, but getting a last minute flight home could cost you a ton. AAA says the average price for a plane ticket is coming in just under 700 bucks. Driving won't be much better as it's going to be one of the worst days of the year for traffic delays. The peak travel times will be between four and six this evening. So if you want to beat the traffic, you want to leave earlier. It's not all bad news though. Gas prices are at least cheap. It's averaging about 239 per gallon here in Wisconsin, about 15 cents cheaper than the national average. 603 right now, a man is in jail this morning after an incident that left one dead on Christmas Eve. Joseph Green was arrested on suspicion of first degree intentional homicide. Police responded to a call on South Midvale Boulevard north of Cherokee Drive just after 4 p.m. Tuesday. Neighbors say they're shocked that something like this happened on their street and are concerned for their safety. I'm in shock because I can't believe that this happened here. I, maybe a robbery, I don't know, but I still can't comprehend what happened. It's like two houses away from me. I just can't. Police, however, say there is no cause for concern of safety and the investigation is still ongoing this morning. Stick with Channel3000.com for updates to this developing story. Right now, Madison police are also investigating an attempted homicide on Christmas Eve. This happened just after 10 o'clock at the BP off the Beltline on Verona Road. Officials say footage shows a shooting happened at that gas station. The victim was taken to a hospital with a gunshot wound that was non-life-threatening. Police say they were later released. Anyone with information on the shooting is asked to call Madison Area Crime Stoppers. 
Breaking overnight into the Channel 3000 Alert Center, firefighters in Mount Horeb responded to a structure fire near Stewart Lake County Park. No injuries have been reported and it is still unclear if anyone was an inside at the time of the fire or what caused it. A community in Minneapolis is coming together this morning to help more than 200 people displaced by a devastating Christmas Day fire. Among those, two brothers who gave their own Christmas gifts to children now left without a home. Marielle Mose has the story. Below the Gethsemane Episcopal Church, I feel the love, blessing, lies piles of love and support among the ashes of a devastating fire. I've lived in Minnesota a long time and I've never seen anything like this yet. So this made me have more hope in my city. Tiana Terry, her husband and five-month-old daughter, were three of 250 people displaced by the fire at the Francis Drake Hotel. They were given diapers, clothes, blankets, and gloves donated by generous strangers. It really made my day. This alone really made my day. An overwhelming amount of donations came in from the public today to a point where they actually had to stop accepting them. Instead, they're asking people to give money. This must be all fun. People came from all over to donate, and many ended up just sticking around to help sort and divvy everything out. Minneapolis is awesome. Over in Cottage Grove, brothers Andrew and Brandon Brundage saw a calling. I decided that we should go take some of our Christmas gifts and donate them to the kids or people that lost things in the fire since they're probably having a rough Christmas. Andrew gave his autographed Kiri Irving sneakers to one of the children. I wanted to give them to a kid to help inspire him and help him keep pushing through tough times. And Brandon donated his new Uno card game. I decided to give it away because I was so excited to play it. These donations may not fix everything, but they certainly provide hope. What's next? I, I don't know, but I know it, 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 it could only get greater. Officials say three people were taken to the hospital and are expected to be recovered. No one was killed in that fire. The Salvation Army of Dane County was not the only branch to fall short of its Red Kettle campaign. Donations also fell short in the Wassa area. Organizers say they got to 80% of their $170,000 goal before the holiday campaign ended on Christmas Eve. The organization says it lacked volunteers this year and fewer people are carrying cash. As of Christmas Eve, the Salvation in Dane County, Salvation Army rather in Dane County says they were about $300,000 short of their goal. While the kettles are gone, you can still donate online. The UW is mourning the loss of one of their most talented alumni this morning. UW Madison Journalism School graduate and songwriter Allie Willis passed away on Christmas Eve. One of the music industry's most colorful and talented characters, Willis co-wrote September and other big hits for Earth, Wind and Fire, as well as the theme song for the hit TV show Friends. While Willis never learned how to play music herself, she wrote the Grammy winning soundtrack to Beverly Hills Cop and was nominated for a Tony for her work on The Color Purple. Willis's partner Prudence Fenton announced her passing on Instagram this morning, saying rest in boogie wonderland, another one of her big hits. She was also a member into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. The Wisconsin Alumni Association released a statement on her passing saying, quote, we've lost an amazing alumna and true badger. Her energy was boundless. We are so grateful that she shared her talents with the war world. Allie Willis was 72. More local news now. Members of our community helped everyone get in the Christmas spirit and made sure no one went hungry. The first United Methodist Church in Madison put on its 37th annual Christmas meal, hosted by Reverend Dr. Mark Fowler and Susan Fowler. The meal was free and in celebration for Christmas by providing a chance for the homeless to have a meal. It gives hopes to, to a situation that there's no hope in. You know, so, so I take the situation emotional towards Christmas time because it's a time of taking care of one another and time of prayer. You know, it's a time of celebration. Organizers say more than 250 people attended this year's meal. All right, 6.09 right now on a Thursday morning and still ahead for us. A lot of us might still be full from our own holiday meals and snacks and are starting to think about how we're going to work all of that food off. Well, just in time for any New Year's resolutions, there's new research showing exercise may slow the signs of aging. We'll sit down with Dr. Mara to talk about those new findings. But first, you'll want to look out for some fog this morning if you're traveling. 
Chris Reese has our day after Christmas forecast up next. Thanks for getting up early with us on News 3 Now this morning. For a forecast that keeps your family safe, watch First Alert Weather. This Well, happy Thursday, folks. We did certainly see near record temperatures on your Christmas day. Temperatures for yesterday topped out at 55. That was one degree shy of the record for the warmest Christmas ever. That happened back in 1982. So the second warmest Christmas yesterday, and I think we have record temperatures that are in jeopardy for today. The record high back from 1936 is 50. Our forecast high for today is 52. That'll likely happen earlier on in the day. So we're going to be watching this very closely. Already things are very mild for us. That's because high pressure continues to send that strong southerly wind flow out our direction and that just continues to pump in these well above normal temperatures that we've seen pretty much all week long. Now one thing that we are watching if you're going to be traveling that's some snow throughout parts of the upper Midwest. You're talking northern Minnesota, North Dakota, parts of South Dakota. Be mindful of that, but that's not all that big of a deal and it will pale in comparison to what I think we'll have on the maps as we head into the weekend. In the meantime, for us, we are clear throughout all of southern Wisconsin, really all of Wisconsin as a whole, with the exception of some fog. That's what some areas are going to be dealing with. In the meantime, we're at 48 in Madison right now, 50 as you work your way over towards Janesville. Some 30s do show up underneath that fog pack that we do have towards the north, but again, things get better as we go through time. Check out these temperatures. We'll be at 47 by 11 o'clock, topping out into the low 50s this afternoon, and then we'll see those temperatures fall back through the 40s into the upper 20s 
for your overnight lows. And then into tomorrow, I think we will be a bit cooler as a week cold front slides through. We'll only see those temperatures topping out into the low 40s, but clouds will be on the increase ahead of that next system that's going to be coming our way this weekend, bringing with it very heavy rainfall. We're talking Saturday into Sunday. We could see more than an inch of rain in some spots. Then that moves on through. We'll get a period of dry weather earlier on on Sunday than Sunday night. I think we start to see that wraparound moisture. That's where that starts to mix with snow and perhaps change over to some snow for a time. Here's the thing about wraparound moisture. It is never all that impressive, so we're not talking any accumulating snow, more so just likely some flurries on the backside. There is a chance of accumulating snow showing up throughout the first week of January. We'll be watching that one closely. In the meantime, look for temperatures to stay mild before we cool down into the start of 2020, but our average high at this time of the year is 27 degrees, so we are still going to be above average even in our cool downs as we head through time. Now for traffic Let's take it over to Stacy K. Stacy. Hey, thank you. Good morning. Roads are a little bit wet this morning, so be careful on the ramps. Otherwise, it's a quiet start on the Beltline with no delays in either direction. Checking out other roads here in Dane County, some brake lights starting to show up on Stoughton approaching the Beltline. No problems downtown. The college kids are off until January 21st. Another main route heading into Madison, cruising along at the posted speeds. No crashes or delays. With your first alert traffic, I'm Stacy K. As we head into the new year, a lot of us are starting to think about getting back into shape. There's new research about how exercise may help fighting some of the effects of aging. And here to explain more is Dr. Mandir Mara from SSM Health. Good morning. Thanks for joining Good morning. us. Isn't so what that, do we need to know? Isn't this our favorite topic? Oh my gosh. First we talk about the holidays and then we talk about getting back in shape and how to make us feel better. Right? Every year. <laughs> <laughs> and we also always talk about the fountain of youth, right? How to ward off things like stroke, hypertension, diabetes, dementia dementia, maybe cancers, maybe we have part of the answer. Aging is a pretty enigmatic process. We don't really know why this happens, how it happens. There's many theories and we know that something happens on a cellular level. This is an amazing study that tells us and showed us that um, they looked at different age category men, uh, young athletes, uh, elderly athletes, and elderly men that just were inactive, sedentary lifestyles. And they basically studied on a cellular level their muscles, how they reacted to exercise, and then acute exercise. The long story short here is that people that were the most active, even the elderly active adults that exercised regularly, had less muscle inflammation. And what that means is we've thought for a long time now that increased inflammation may be related or associated with aging. And so the moral of the story here is if you don't use it, you lose it. And so it's never too late to start exercising but what the study shows us is the people that have consistently been very active continue to do better and continue to have less of that inflammation. So maybe we're cracking the code here on a little bit of how to get that fountain of use. Now we do want to remind people that if you've been very sedentary for a long time or you have different types of health, health ailments, definitely checking with your doctor, with your healthcare provider saying, how should I begin this process? We definitely don't want to increase falls risk or make you do anything super strenuous that's going to hurt you but it's never too late. And if you're already active, the key here is to continue to be active. Again, warding off those uh, other disease processes is very important. People say, well, Dr. Mara, the, keeping the body young is fine. What is this doing for my mind? All the studies have shown the more active we are, the better the mind processes, maybe the better it wards off, again, things like dementia, some of these other issues. So being active is not just good for the mind, but also the body. It decreases those inflammatory markers, and then when you do build up those markers, it gets rid of them quicker if you're just used to exercising. What's your favorite form of exercising? Yoga is yoga. definitely my favorite. Okay. It doesn't take a lot either. It doesn't. A lot of people get shy. They say, wow, yoga, I have to be in this hot room and it's intense. There are so many different types of yoga. There's even chair yoga out mm -hmm. there for people that maybe aren't ready to do the down dog and, and the intense stuff. So even chair yoga and doing stuff, um, you know, that's at your speed is a great idea. Yeah, that's always like what I always say is like it only takes a little bit of something, <laughs> even just a couple of minutes and you can feel a lot better. It's true and I think people shy away because they say wow 150 minutes a week how am I going to find the time for that? Mm -hmm. What that breaks down to is maybe 20 to 30 minutes a day. You can do yoga, cycling, biking. It doesn't even have to be a traditional exercise. Maybe it's gardening. Maybe it's tossing a ball with your son or grandson. You know there's definitely creative ways to get your heart rate up and still stay active. Yeah and if you start kind of small too you're not going to feel like exactly. a complete failure either exactly. if it doesn't happen. And your muscles will get that time to recover and you're really just gradually working back into it. All right.
Dr. Mara, as always, thanks for joining us. Great to be here. And we'll be right back. Stay with us. So we may not have had a white Christmas here in southern Wisconsin, but it was a white Christmas in San Diego. A weather system out there led to some snowy side roads and Christmas Day snowball fights for kids who don't see snow all too often. Meanwhile, our Chris Reese is a little jealous, still waiting for his first white Christmas. He's fighting back the tears right now. Yeah. I can see him. Josh, I think I have enough salt <laughs> that they never need to buy any <laughs> to go through the rest of time. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, that's all right. There was a year in Houston where my family sent me to Kentucky to see a white Christmas. It didn't snow in Kentucky, but Houston had a white Christmas while I was gone. So I've never had it. That's all right. Next year is the year. In the meantime, we're dealing with the record warmth out there, Josh. It's 48 degrees already wow. this morning. Yeah, that's how we're starting off those temperatures today. And they're going to continue to get even warmer. 50 in Janesville right now. 46 as you work your way over towards Monroe. And then we do see some 30s as you work your way just back towards the north and west. That's where we've had a snowpack. So it has been just a little bit uh, on a colder side there. Temperatures this morning will jump from 42 towards 48. We're going to be staying mostly cloudy and mild. Then as we move into the afternoon, look for those temperatures topping out right around 52 degrees. So this is record warmth, folks. The reason I point that out is simply because our record for today set all the way back in 1936 is 50. But as we approach the weekend, I'm watching a storm system that I do think could cause some travel troubles for the upper Midwest, perhaps a colder pattern as we head to the first couple of days of the new year, along with maybe some chances for wintry weather just after Christmas. But Josh will fine tune those details coming up in uh, about a few minutes. All right, Chris, thank you.
The Badgers are officially on the road to the Rose Bowl this morning. The Wisconsin football team departed on buses from Camp Randall yesterday while Paul Christ and the coaching staff flew out of the Dane County Regional Airport. They'll have four days in California before the big game. Plenty of friends and family will follow the team out west, and that includes quarterback Jack Cohn, who says a former coach of his predicted he'd be playing in this game years before he even knew he'd be playing college football. One of my old lacrosse coaches would always go to the Rose Bowl, and he used to tell me that one day he was going to come watch me play the Rose Bowl, and this was before we even knew football was going to be a thing, so pretty amazing. We also have a team headed to Pasadena to get you ready for game day. The Rose Bowl is just one week away on New Year's Day. Kickoff is set for 4 p.m. Central Time. The Milwaukee Bucks played on a national stage on Christmas Day, but it didn't go as well as they might have hoped in Philadelphia. Giannis struggled shooting the ball, but still ended up with 18 points and 14 rebounds. The 76ers dominated most of the game, though, and a strong fourth quarter wasn't enough for the Bucks. They lost 121 to 109. This is just their fifth loss of the season. They still have the best record in the NBA. All right, still ahead for us on a Thursday morning. We've got the top three things you need to know before heading out the door. And we also have everything you need to know about what's expected to be a very busy travel day. Keep watching News 3 Now this morning. From the Channel3000.com Alert Center, this is News 3 Now This Morning. 
Good morning, everyone, and thanks for staying with us on this Thursday, December 26th. I'm Josh Breider. Leah and Hattie are off this morning, so Chris Reese is in with your forecast. But first, let's get to your top three headlines this morning. South Korean media reports four American surveillance planes flew over the Korean Peninsula Christmas Day as a precaution. This after threats from North Korea. The communist nation had a promised a Christmas gift earlier this month, which is widely expected to be a ballistic missile or nuclear weapons test. Recent satellite images show a new structure believed to be for manufacturing mobile launchers for long range missiles. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu was rushed off the stage during a campaign event yesterday after a rocket attack from the Gaza Strip. Israeli authorities confirm a rocket had been fired but was intercepted by their nation's missile defense system. No injuries were reported as a result of that launch. Israeli defense forces say they hit a number of Yamas targets in response. Well, as millions of Americans take to the roads the day after Christmas, bad weather could make the trip challenging for some. The National Weather Service says a strong winter storm is likely to bring heavy rain and possible flooding to parts of Southern California. Much quieter here at home as Chris Reese is here with your weather and traffic update. Hi, Chris. Hello, Josh. That's right. California dealing with the cooler, stormier weather as for us. We are dealing with the record warmth and that continues as we go through the day. But as we approach the weekend, folks, I'm looking at a round of weather that could lead to some messy weekend travel throughout parts of the country. Beyond that, I think we're turning colder, but we are nowhere near the word cold in the meantime. Temperatures this morning are at 48 degrees in Madison. Janesville already at 50, and this is after they've fallen a couple degrees. They were at 52 not too long ago. 30s do show up just to our north, but we are truly under the influence of that mild weather. We'll continue to see those temperatures warm up this morning. We'll top out right around 52 degrees moving into this afternoon. Josh. All right, Chris, thank you. Those roads are looking pretty good out there this morning as plenty of people are leaving early on what's expected to be a second busiest travel day of the year. Here's a live look at the Dane County Regional Airport this morning, a very busy airport. You can see someone even running there across the, the front entrance there. And as of now, no delays heading in or out of the airport from Madison. Heading home today might cost you a lot. AAA says the average price for a ticket today is more than $690. Driving won't be much better as it's going to be one of the worst days of the year for traffic delays. The peak travel times will be later today between 4 and 6. Now it's all, not all bad news. Gas prices are averaging only 2.39 per gallon here in Wisconsin, about 15 cents cheaper than the national average. Well, as millions of people travel between now and New Year's Eve, the airline industry is working to find a more comfortable way to fly. They're working on what they're calling the perfect airline seat, offering more comfort. This really has like a new plane smell to it. Absolutely. Oh, my God. It, and it is fun because people associate that with new and, and shiny and, and fantastic. And so, yeah, definitely new plane smell for all of our guests. CBS This Morning will have more on what makes these new seats so perfect starting at 7. Well, staying in the skies this morning, American Airlines is now offering non-binary gender options for customers. The airline is the latest to offer travelers the option. They'll be able to choose U or X as well as male or female when booking. The airline says it's glad to better accommodate preferences of travelers and employees. The feature is only available currently by calling the airline, but the company says it'll update its website soon. More money was spent online during this year's holiday season than in any other year. That's according to MasterCard. They say sales from November 1st through December 24th increased nearly 19% compared to the same time last year. Experts say the later than usual Thanksgiving may have played a factor in online sales this year. The biggest online shopping day this season actually wasn't Cyber Monday. It was last weekend's Super Saturday. That day alone pulled in more than $34 billion nationwide. That's more than four times the sales from this year's Cyber Monday. 6.33 right now. A man is in jail this morning after an incident that left one dead on Christmas Eve. Joseph Green was arrested on suspicion of first-degree intentional homicide. Police responded to a call on South Midvale Boulevard, north of Cherokee Drive, just after 4 p.m. Tuesday. Neighbors say they're shocked something like this happened on their street and are still concerned for their safety. I'm in shock because I can't believe that this happened here. I, maybe a robbery, I don't know, but I still can't comprehend what happened. It's like two houses away from me. I just can't. 
Police, however, say that there is no cause for concern of safety. Stay with Channel3000.com for updates to this developing story. Right now, Madison police are also investigating an attempted homicide on Christmas Eve. This happened just after 10 at the BP just off the Beltline on Verona Road. Officials say footage shows a shooting happened at that gas station. A victim was taken to a hospital with a gunshot wound that was non-life-threatening. Police say they were later released. Anyone with information on this shooting is asked to call Madison Area Crime Stoppers. Well, the spirit of giving carried strong throughout the year at the UW Hospital. The hospital says 28 people gave their kidneys to strangers in 2019, a big surge from previous years. UW Hospital had its first non-directed donor in 2003 and an average of just four until 2017. The National Kidney Registry says there were about 300 such donors nationwide this year. The FDA has approved a new drug for those who suffer from migraines. It's called Eupropegant. It could be an alternative for those who don't respond to or are unable to take medications. Now on the market, nausea, sleepiness, and dry mouth were the most commonly reported side effects in a study published last month. It's estimated that 40 million people in the U.S. and a billion worldwide suffer from migraines. 635 right now, coming up in the morning sprint, we have the latest on a fire that left hundreds of people without a place to go on Christmas Day. But first, a couple welcomes a new baby boy into the world with the help of the three wise men on the side of the road. You're watching News 3 Now this morning. Welcome back at 639 on a Thursday morning. We've been asking you to share your morning with us and Janet tagged us 
in this Instagram post. Just an incredible shot there of some frost and also the field there and the farm in the background. This would be a Leah Lynchide special if she were here. If you would like to share your morning with us, please do so by sending us a picture of it over on our Channel 3000 Facebook page, Instagram, or Twitter, and use the hashtag MyNews3Morning. A New Hampshire couple is celebrating an unexpected Christmas gift delivery this morning. Brooklyn and Jacob Patchner are the proud parents of a new baby boy who was born on the side of the interstate early Christmas morning. It was just after midnight when Brooklyn started feeling contractions and they decided they needed to go to the hospital, but they couldn't quite make it. They pulled over about 10 miles from the hospital and got some help from a local police officer, a state police sergeant and a state trooper. The story sounds familiar. You know, these Somebody's born on Christmas Day, you know, three guys sitting outside waiting to meet them. It's like, it seems fitting. All the officers that showed up and the ambulance and everything like that, like, we're very grateful for them. Congrats to them. Brooklyn and Jacob named the new baby boy Dominic. He was originally due to arrive near a different holiday, New Year's Eve. 6.40 is your time right now, and if your travels are taking you north this morning, you're going to want to look out for some foggy patches. Chris is in next with everything you need to know before heading out the door on a very busy travel day. But first, it is December 26th, and we want to say happy birthday to Memphis, Montgomery, and all the other kids turning three today. Thanks for waking up early and celebrating with us on News 3 Now this morning. Look who's Welcome back. It is 643 on this Thursday morning. Beautiful shot from our Platteville Skycam of a 
nice little after Christmas sunrise. Chris Reese is talking some record heat today. Chris, can I say that? Yeah, we could be seeing some record warmth out there today. We've been dealing with these warm temperatures for some time, but anyone who's going to be traveling, I think they're truly watching things as we go through today. We did have some fog earlier. I think that's going to be clearing, and then we'll see a few clouds with no issues expected tomorrow. By Saturday, I think things begin to change. That's when we could see some heavy rain moving back into the picture, along with the potential for some slick roads. So we're going to be watching that for any travelers very closely. In the meantime, no travel delays are expected throughout most of the country. This is going through today, but pay attention to what happens as we head into Friday morning. We start to see those delays creeping up into parts of the Midwest. Friday night, anyone headed towards Nebraska could be dealing with some major travel delays, and that moves our direction as we start to head into Saturday. We're going to touch on why that's going to be the case as we go through a couple minutes from now. Here's what's going on in the meantime. We do have those winds still continuing out of the south. That's keeping the warmer air around. That's what's kept the warm air in play for us all week. There's one area of low pressure just back towards the north and west. I do think this cold front will slide through later on tonight, which will shape up for a little bit of a cooler Friday, but in the meantime, we're still going to be warm and dry, and that is the case for just about everyone. High resolution Doppler continues to bring a very clean sweep for us as we go through today. Expect that to linger into your Friday as well. There is a dense fog advisory, though, for areas to the north. That's going to go until 10 a.m. Camp Douglas, Watoma, Black River Falls are all included in this dense fog advisory. That's where visibility is down to a quarter mile or a half a mile. So if you're traveling that direction or waking up that direction this morning, please be on the lookout for the fog. Use the fog lights, have the defrosters ready just so that you stay safe. In the meantime, watch temperatures. We'll top out at 52 this afternoon. Overnight tonight, we'll have a westerly wind. Temperatures cool down towards the upper 20s, which will be the first time pretty much all week that we saw temperatures below freezing. 41 for that high as we move into your Friday. Then we start to see the clouds on the increase headed into Saturday. Here is that next system headed our direction. We'll start to see a warm front associated with that initially. Then we'll see the heavy rain as we move into your Saturday, Saturday night into Sunday. That lifts towards the north. We get in on a period of drier weather than by Sunday evening as this low starts to move away from us. Some of that colder air starts to wrap back in. This is when we could see some of those wrap around snow showers and flurries. I don't think it'll be a big deal at all, but nonetheless, this will help reestablish some of the colder air across our part of the country. Then we'll watch the coming days of the new year. That's when we could potentially see another wintry maker around here around the 3rd of January. We'll watch this one very closely. As I say in weather world, this is a long way away. There's a lot that can change, but nonetheless, this is our next chance to see the weather look like it normally would look around this time of the year. In the meantime, watch the overall pattern. I do think things get generally colder for us. Here's the cold air that we'll see moving in this weekend into early next week, and then we'll keep that colder air established into the start of the new year. We'll watch to see if perhaps some more real deal cold comes our direction by the time we get you through that first week of January. But in the meantime, folks, look for those temperatures staying well above average. Average. We'll see that chance of rain changing over to snow on Sunday night with some light snow and flurries Monday morning that could potentially linger into your Tuesday morning as well. But then we will watch the days after the new year for temperatures to be back into the lower 30s. The final few days of the decade. Here. It is the final few days of the decade. Josh. Crazy. I know. All right, Chris. Thank you. Stay with us. The morning sprint is up next.
651 time for the morning sprint as we give you everything you need to know before heading out the road or heading out to the road today. It starts with breaking news this morning just into the Channel 3000 Alert Center. Two young men are dead after a crash just after midnight in Rock County. The Sheriff's Department says a car driven by a 19 year old man was heading east on Rockport Road in the town of Janesville before swerving to avoid another car. The 19 year old's car hit a tree pitting him and a 20 year old passenger in the car. Both men were pronounced dead after being pulled from the car. Their names are being withheld until family can be notified. If you're heading home from the holidays today, you can expect some delays. AAA says it'll be the second busiest travel day of the year. This is a live look at the Dane County Regional Airport right now. So far, it's looking pretty good for all incoming and outgoing flights. But weather elsewhere in the country may affect connecting flights. On the roads, peak travel times are expected to be between 4 and 6 tonight. The good news, gas is averaging 239 per gallon compared to 255 nationally. Of course, we are watching the weather here. Good news, high resolution Doppler coming in on a clean sweep for all of us. We're waking up to partly cloudy skies anywhere on this map. Wanake, Cross Plains, Mount Horup, things will be partly cloudy for us today. Same for Sun Prairie, Cottage Grove, and Stoughton. Indeed, things will be quiet pretty much throughout all of South Central Wisconsin, but we're also going to stay mild. We're already waking up at temperatures into the upper 40s, knocking on that door of 50 degrees. And folks, I do believe we'll top out at 50 this afternoon. Chris, thank you. One man is in jail this morning after an apparent homicide on Christmas Eve. It happened just after 4 Tuesday on South Midvale Boulevard north of Cherokee Drive. Joseph Green is being held on suspicion of first degree intentional homicide. Neighbors are saying they're in shock and can't believe it happened in their neighborhood. We're expecting to learn more information later today. Madison police also investigated an attempted homicide that night. One person was shot at the BP gas station off the Beltline on Verona Road just after 10 on Tuesday night. One person was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. That person was later released from the hospital. Anyone with information on this shooting is asked to call the Madison Area Crime Stoppers. More than 200 people, including 100 children, are now without a home in Minneapolis after a fire consumed their building on Christmas Day. The four alarm fires started around 3 o'clock in the morning at the Drake Hotel in downtown Minneapolis. Families were evacuated and spent their early hours on Christmas Day standing outside in the cold, some in their pajamas and without shoes. The hotel served as an overflow shelter for families experiencing homelessness. In Mount Horeb, several departments responded to a fire near Stewart Lake County Park last night. No injuries have been reported and it's unclear if anyone was inside at the time of the fire. That cause is still under investigation. Folks in Southwest Asia are being treated to the last solar eclipse of the decade this morning. This footage here is from Thailand where locals checked out the cosmic spectacle. Now this was an annular solar eclipse, meaning the moon did not fully eclipse the sun. The next annular eclipse will be in June of 2020 and will pass over Africa, the Middle East and Asia. Breaking overnight, at least 21 people are dead in the Philippines after Typhoon Ursula ravaged the central part of the island nation on Christmas. The storm made landfall of the equivalent of a Category 1 hurricane with gusts of up to 121 miles per hour. Five fishermen are also missing. More than 20 typhoons have struck the nation this year. Ursula is expected to maintain typhoon intensity for at least the next 24 hours as it moves across the South China Sea. South Korean media reports four American surveillance planes flew over the Korean Peninsula Christmas Day as a precaution after threats from North Korea. The communist nation had promised a Christmas gift earlier this month, which was widely expected to be a ballistic missile or nuclear weapons test. Recent satellite images show a new structure believed to be for manufacturing mobile launchers for long-range missiles. The UW is mourning the loss of one of their most talented alumni this morning. UW Madison Journalism School graduate and songwriter Allie Willis passed away on Christmas Eve. One of the music industry's most colorful and talented characters, Willis co-wrote September and other big hits for Earth, Wind and Fire, as well as the theme song for the hit TV show Friends. She was 72 years old. The Salvation Army of Dane County was not the only branch to fall short of its Red Kettle campaign goal. Donations also fell short in the Wausau area. Organizers there say they got about 80% of their $170,000 goal before the holiday campaign ended Christmas Eve. 
The Dane County branch ended its campaign $300,000 short of its goal. It was a record-breaking year for online shopping thanks to a late holiday shopping rush. Last weekend, Super Saturday pulled in more than $34 billion nationwide, more than four times the sales from Cyber Monday this year. Overall, online sales were up almost 19% from November 1st through Christmas Eve compared to last year. That momentum might carry on for the next few days. Financial experts say today, Friday and Saturday are expected to land in the top 10 of the busiest days for retail. That's thanks to all those people looking to use gift cards or return items Santa may have made a mistake on, of course. If you are making a return, it is a good idea to take the receipt with you and know what the terms of the returns are before you head to the store. The Badgers are headed west after boarding buses to the Rose Bowl yesterday. They'll have four days of preparation in California before the big game on New Year's Day. We'll have coverage all week leading up to the game. Kickoff is set for 4 p.m. next Thursday. 6.57 right now. Let's turn it over to Stacy K with a look at your first alert traffic. Hi, Stacy. Hi. Well, uh, no, no real busyness happening right now. Just volume just starting to increase on the westbound belt line. The roads are a little bit wet, so be careful on the ramps. Otherwise, just a few brake lights between Stoughton and West Broadway. Inbound John Nolan slowing down a little at Olin Ave and North Shore Drive, making your way into downtown. And other main routes heading into Madison, moving along at the posted speeds with no crashes or delays. With your first alert traffic, I'm Stacy K. Thanks, Stacy. And we do continue to see the warm weather, and that's going to stick around as we go through today. We'll cool down and turn stormier this weekend. All right, Chris, thank you, and thanks for joining us, everyone. Go make it a great day.